The first step is to install Laravel. Now I'm using something called Laravel Homestead. You can find more about this in the Laravel documentation or we have a course on how to set all this up if you just head over to the CodeCourse website. So I'm going to pull up my terminal and I'm gonna create a Laravel project and I'm gonna call this Fresher. Now I already have this set up in this domain here which you'll find out more about when you start to work with Laravel Homestead. But all we're going to do is wait for this to install and then we should have a Laravel installation ready to go. So now that this has finished, we can go and refresh here and we should see the default welcome page. Great. So I'm going to pull up my database manager just here. I'm using MySQL and I'm using SQL Pro. Now it really doesn't matter what you're using to manage your database. The important thing to know is that we're not creating our database tables ourselves we're using something called migrations, and that's what we're gonna deal with in this part. So I currently have no tables at all. We're gonna create a tasks table, but we're not gonna do this from our management software. We're purely gonna use this just to look at what we have. So if we head over to the Laravel source code then, under the database folder, we have a folder called migrations. So we have two by default. These are to create the users table, and the password resets table. And that's because Laravel ships with the ability to very quickly create authentication. But for the purpose of this video, we're not doing that. So I'm gonna delete these two migrations. So now we want to create a new migration. Now we're not gonna create a file manually. Again, this is all made very simple for us on the command line. So I'm gonna go into the directory that I am working in and I'm going to use Artisan, which is Laravel's command line interface or CLI. So to make a migration then, we use the make command and then migration, and then we create the name of the migration. Now, if you're not sure about some commands, you can just run PHP Artisan on its own, and it will give you a list of all of the commands that you can run, specifically making things. This makes your job a lot easier when you're building something because you don't have to write too much code or at least too much boilerplate code. You can focus on your actual application. So let's run PHP Artisan make migration. Now the convention for this is something like create tasks table. You can technically call these anything you like, but we're going to stick with the uh, convention here. Now what we can also do is pass in this create option and we can give the name of the table. This will create even more boilerplate code for us. So let's run this and wait for that to finish and you can see that that has created a migration. So the purpose of this migration then is to define out what columns we want and then when we are done we can execute this or run this and this will create all of our database schema for us. It's a lot nicer than having to do this manually and the reason for that is that what you can do is roll back a migration. So imagine you have a project and you create a new table. Of course, when you put this on a production server, you're gonna to have to create your database schema again and again. With this, you run one command and it will migrate all of your database changes over. Now we'll look at how we do that in just a moment, but let's focus on the kind of things that we want here. Now you'll notice that we have two here for us already. Now increment is the primary key of this table. So usually when you create a table, you're probably used to seeing a ID just here, which is an integer uh, and it's auto increment. So it will increment for every record we create. But obviously because we're not doing this manually, we have a very convenient shortcut and that is just this here. Now timestamps will create two columns. This will create a created at, so it looks like this, and an updated at column. Now these are filled when a record is created and when this record is updated, the updated at column will be changed. So we don't need to worry too much about them for now because we're not gonna be dealing with them, but it's important to know uh, what's going on there. So let's just create a column then. So we only need one in this case and this is a string. So we use the string method and we pass in here name. So this is the name of the column. So now we also have down just here. This will be what happens when we roll back our migration. So the opposite of our up is our down. That's all you need to know. So if you were adding a column, you would remove it here. If you're creating a table, you drop it here or delete it. 
Now, before we run this migration, it's important that we change over our database settings. So our configuration by default is within this .env file. This is just environment variables that are put into our application that we can use. We won't go too much into these just yet, uh, but uh, we'll of course cover them elsewhere on CodeCourse. So these are our database credentials. Now for me, the database here is called Fresher, so I'm gonna switch this over. And my username and password is Homestead and Secret because I'm using Laravel Homestead. But of course, if you were using some kind of local database, this might be root and root, for example. So now that I've changed that over, I can come over to my terminal and run PHP Artisan Migrate. This will run all of my migrations. If I'd created two more, this would run them as well. And you can see that we have, first of all, a migration table created successfully, and then we have that specific migration that we created, and that's been run. So if we head over to our database, you can see that we have these two tables. Migrations will keep track of the migrations that you run, and of course this is the migration that we created. So we have a name created at and updated at, simple as that. So that's our database created, but what we also want to create is a model which will represent the data in our tasks table. So you may have come across models before, but within Laravel we use something called Eloquent, and we'll dive into this a bit later when we start to create out tasks. So our models are usually kept within this root directory. You can create a models folder if you want, but we're gonna keep things nice and simple. Now by default we have a user model which we're not using at the moment because we don't have a users table remember we deleted their migrations but let's generate a new model for our tasks so to do this we use artisan make model and then we give the singular version of what we've created so in this case it will be task if it was messages it would be message etc so let's create that and you can see that that's been created just here now this is actually all we need for this to work. What we can now do elsewhere in our code is something like task create. We can pass in some data. So for example, the name like so, learn Laravel, and that would create a record in the database for us. So we'll deal with that a bit later, but we now have our task model. And if this doesn't make too much sense just yet, it will make more sense later when we start to actually create our tasks. So now that we've done that, we need to set up roots because what we need to do is be able to create the interface to be able to create tasks. So let's go over and start to look at roots and views in the next part.